want to take a moment and introduce myself to some, and there are many of you that I already know. Um, I am uh, Dr. Kami Johnson. I am a licensed pastor. I am a licensed pastoral counselor, um, salon owner, hairstylist. Um, I have a bachelor's and a master's um, and also a PhD in counseling and psychology. Um, I also have a master's and license in temperament and pastoral counseling. So um, I operate in dual realms on the spiritual side, um, giving counseling and also on the clinical side. My assignment on this morning is to talk to you all about mental and behavioral health uh, awareness, um, giving you tools and instructions um, to help you oftentimes when we're dealing with life situations and circumstances, um, especially as black people, this is Black History Month. Many times we see, we have experienced in our families, um, generationally, what has been considered uh, abandonment when it comes to mental and behavior health. Uh, we have been told, we have heard stories of families sharing, especially those that were parents, grandparents, uh, whatever goes on in our house stays in our house. Whatever goes on in our family stays in our family. And with that strict um, implementation of isolating issues and circumstances and situations, it has caused many of us, many of our family members, not to get the mental and behavioral help that's needed. Um, we have seen through generations many of life situations and circumstances that could have been turned around, things that could have changed had our relatives, had our loved ones, had our family or friends got mental health. So that's part of what I'm here to share with you today um, about mental illnesses and how it not only affects your life as you go out in the world, but also how it affects you in the body of Christ. Many of us think that once we come into the knowledge of God, once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that um, our personal issues, our personal experiences, the battles that we fight on a daily basis, we feel like they're going to go away. Because subconsciously, that's what we have been conditioned to believe. Once we get in Christ, everything gets better. But how many of you know by experience, that's not always the case? Amen. Sometimes Amen. it intensifies. Sometimes yes. the Amen. enemy comes against us even greater. Sometimes our warfare, the things that we go through, intensify because we're no longer operating in our own strength. And how many of us know we're in church that there's a dual world? There's a spiritual world and there's a physical world. Amen. There's a war that's going on in both worlds. Yeah. And spiritually, sometimes the war is subconsciously and consciously. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to also talk about today. And I'm going to tie it in with the word of God. Yes. If you go to Ephesians 6 chapter, verse number 10 through 13. The apostles clearly writes, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, nor against principalities, nor against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Yes. How many know there is evil around us? Yes, daily? come on. Yes. There's so much that is going on. And Satan, or the devil, has become very successful in deceiving human beings through the spirit of deception 
to make us believe that our enemies are our church members, oh, our yeah. big enemies are people that are in our communities, that our enemy is um, our school teachers or our peers at school. He strategically disguises himself through human flesh and have us focus on wars that are internally and externally that God never intended for us to gauge, engage in. Mm -hmm. He fights us with our emotions. He fights us through mental illnesses with depression, with anxiety, with defiance, he, with rebellion. He fights us with um, social anxiety, issues that intellectually and subconsciously he's weighing in on us nonstop. How many know that the first battlefield is the battlefield of your mind? Yeah. Yeah. The right. second battlefield is the battlefield of our heart. Yes. Yes. And what is our heart connected to? Our spirit. Yes. Yes. It is the most sensitive and essential part of God that dwells within us. Mm. Yes. So if he can emotionally get us unstable, Please. if he can bombard us with depression, if he can bombard us with anxiety, with low self-esteem, codependency, which is what Teach. he does. Teach. Hallelujah. We find ourselves isolated. Yes. yes. We find ourselves withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And we never seek help when God has already established. And not only do we not seek help, but those that are closest to us, many times we lash out. That's yes. Right. Many times we abuse the help that God gives us. Oh, yeah. Many times we we yes. take advantage of the love that people exemplify to yes. us. Yes. Because it's not familiar. Yes. Because we're in a war. So not only does the enemy come against us internally and externally, but also with as Christians, it is our charge by God to understand and identify who our real enemy is. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, the enemy reveals himself through mental and behavioral health issues. Mm -hmm. We wonder why crime is prevailing in the cities, mm -hmm. in the state, in the nation. A lot of it has to do with mental and behavior illnesses untreated. Mm, right. Yes. People that never got help, mm. never learned how to control their anger, never learned how to control their temper, mm -hmm. never was brought into the awareness of the consequences of and the choices of their lives. Yes. That's what Amen. we do when it comes to psychologists, when it comes to psychiatrists. When it comes to mental health professionals, when it comes to pastors, ministers of the gospel, that's what we are called to do. We are called to bring you into the awareness of your behavior, mentally and spiritually. All right. Oftentimes, mental illnesses control, as I said before, our conscious and our subconscious mindsets. And it manifests through our attitudes. It manifests through our behavior. And most importantly, it manifests in our actions. Mm -hmm. How do we act? How do we receive? Mm -hmm. Mental illness doesn't matter or doesn't care about your age. Mm -hmm. It doesn't care about your gender. All right. It mm -hmm. doesn't care about your race. Mm -hmm. Anyone can be susceptible to mental and behavior illnesses at any given time. That's right. That's right. It is during those times that we should reach out. We should seek help mm -hmm. to people that God have already established in the earth to help us. Yes. How many know it's true? No man is an island. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Each one teach one to reach one. Yes. We Amen. all need each other. Yes. We do. There's an African proverb that says what? Know thyself. Yes. And not only know thyself, but to your own self, be true. Be true. Amen. Because we think that if while we are in church, we're perfect. Mm -hmm. While we are in church, we have to put on an image and a persona that we don't go through anything. Mm -hmm. Life can hit any one of us in any way that, that will alter our destiny. Mm -hmm. If we're not focused, if we're not submitted to the will and the ways of God. Mm. If we're not humble enough 
to let God lead us. And even when we get off track, to bring us back on track. Mm. Because every one of us is going to have something hit us. Whether we are children, whether we are teenagers, whether we are adults. All of us are going to have to deal with something. Yes. Life changing. Something traumatic. Something catastrophic. Mm -hmm. That can alter the course of your life. Mm. Hallelujah. And oftentimes we have no say in the matter. Mm. Yes. Oftentimes we have no control. So what do you do in those moments? You seek help with the people that God have already established to cease whatever is going on in your life mm. and to assist. We have no problem going to a medical doctor. That we have heart problems, we have no problem reaching out to a heart specialist. If we're having problems with our vision, we have no problem contacting an eye doctor. Mm -hmm. If we have something going on with our blood, we have no problem at all reaching out to uh, an endocrinologist, those that can help us physically. But what about the mental battles? Mm -hmm. How many of us reach out mentally when we're going through things? Mm -hmm. And not only men mentally, but spiritually. Mm -hmm. How many of you reach out spiritually when you're going through something? Because the two is intertwined. The mind is a spirit as well. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts is a spirit. Mm -hmm. Your mind has never been seen by the eye. No scientist can say they have seen the mind. Yes. They can only see the brain. Mm -hmm. No scientist can say they have seen the thought. They see wave patterns. That something is taking place in your head. Something is transpiring. But it's spiritual. That's why the word of God says, let the mind of Christ rule what? Your heart. Yes, Lord. Your spirit. Mm -hmm. Because the mind, the, your thoughts, are also what controls your actions. Yes. It controls your emotions. It controls your attitude. Mm-hmm. We, we can look at Romans 12 chapter, verse 9 through 10. It says, let love be without dissimulation. Reject that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection to one another with brotherly love. Yes. In honor and preferring one another. Yes. What does that say? Oftentimes, we can't predict. Mm -hmm. We can't control how other people treat us. Yes. But we can control how we treat other people. Mm -hmm. And we can control what we allow to affect Take. us. Yes. And the effects that it have on us. Mm -hmm. So God is saying in order to keep your mental and emotional behavior balanced, we must exemplify love. Mm -hmm. Only wow. perfect love. Mm. Can wow. overturn things. Perfect oh, love. Yes. Can allow you to walk past situations that were meant to destroy you. Yes. Mm -hmm. The love of God. Mm. Yes. Personal love. Self -love. Yes. Lord. Hallelujah. We have to learn to discipline and count in our attitude. Yes. yes. How we respond. Mm -hmm. How, How we, we react. Yes. What is attitude? Attitude is a right or wrong spirit yes. that controls the thoughts and behavior of a person. It is having a certain feeling about yourself and about other people. In other words, what I'm trying to convey is your attitude is the mental approach to life. Amen. Okay, so what is life? Mm. Some people say life is just things that happen to you. I have had many people in my sessions um, say with something, one has abused them, when somebody has mistreated them, when they have gone through something, that's life. Mm. That's not the definition of life. So I would ask them, okay, so you're telling me life is it's saying it's okay for somebody to abuse you? Life is it's okay for you to go through trials and tribulations? Mm -hmm. That's your norm. That's not the norm of God. Not. Yes. That's not yes. the norm of Christ. Right. Yes. 
He said, Behold, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even that your soul prosper. That's not just talking about materially. That's talking about prospering mentally, yes. emotionally, physically, in every area of our lives. Yes. He wants us to prosper. Yes. Amen. Your attitude has the ability to bring you prosperity or to make you more wealthier than your talents. Amen. Or your educational background. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, speak. Why do I say that? Because your attitude, your behavior, can cause people, if it's good, can cause people to want to be a blessing to you. Yes. Want to help you. Yes. Want to see you succeed. Yes. Or it can do the opposite. Mm. Regardless of how talented you are. Regardless of how smart you are. How intelligent you are. If you have a bad attitude. If you have a bad disposition. If you're nasty, you're rebellious, it makes people not want to deal with you. Okay. People will not help you. Speak. So your attitude controls your life and your approach to life. Your attitude also controls how you handle life. Amen. Have you ever taken the time, young people especially, to view your attitude towards life. Do you ever take time to ask yourself, what do I think about my own life? Mm -hmm. Questions we never ask ourselves, even many adults. Have you asked, took the time to ask yourself, how do I feel about me? Mm. Not what other people think, not how other people feel, but how you think and how you feel about yourself. Yes. A lot of mental illnesses can be overcame mm -hmm. simply by how we perceive ourselves. Amen. What do I mean by that? There are several mental and behavioral disorders such as depression, anger, mm -hmm. low self-esteem, mm -hmm. codependency, mm -hmm. conduct disorders, oppositional defiance, social anxiety that can be overcame by simply adjusting your thoughts and your attitude about yourself yes. and the opinion that you have mm -hmm. about yourself. Yes. Sometimes we focus more on what people think and how they feel mm -hmm. instead of how we, think how we feel and how we feel. Yes. How many of us can truly say, and I'm bringing it to a close, I feel good about myself. Mm, man. How many of you have actually taken the time? Because as women, as girls, we as young men, as boys, we all get in the mirror. Every Come on, morning. yeah. We're in the mirror, we're combing our hair, we're brushing our teeth, we're washing our face. Some of us are putting on makeup. We'll look all around our face. How many ever look ourselves in the eye? In the eye? Mm, man. Come on. How many ever take the time at the break of your morning mm -hmm. and encourage yourself? Mm -hmm. I woke up because of you. You're telling this to yourself. I love you. How many of you have ever told yourself you love you? Think about the positive change that will make in your life. Yes. Think about the positive change that will make in your day. Mm -hmm. David say, I encourage myself yes. in the Lord. Mm -hmm. How many of us can genuinely say, I love me. Mm. It doesn't matter who else not don't love me. As long as I know that I love mm, me and God dwells in me, yes. I know that God loves me. Yes. And when God loves you, the measure is full. Mm -hmm. right? Amen. Because everything that you are, you become what God is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the I am begin to manifest to you. Mm. 
So even when Jesus said, I am the way, mm -hmm. you become the way of change for other people. Yes. You become the way of change for yourself. Mm. He said, I am the truth. Mm -hmm. You become the truth, true manifestation of God in activation every day. Mm -hmm. Because some people never pick up the Bible, mm -hmm. even as kids. We have to live by example. We have to set an example. And how do we do that? Allowing us to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you don't love you, how can you expect anybody else to love you? Mm -hmm. If you're not happy for you mm -hmm. or about your life, how can you expect anybody else to celebrate life with you? Mm -hmm. People are going to go to those that are full of joy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. If you have low expectations, if you have low self-esteem, people are not going to cling to you. That's right. They want to go where faith is high. All right. Expectation, yes. anticipation is high. Yes. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. By building yourself up. Mm -hmm. Seeking the resources that are available. Mm -hmm. Spiritual resources. Mm -hmm. God has given us shepherds. He has given us Pastors, yes. leaders, teachers, fivefold ministry leaders mm -hmm. after his own heart. Mm -hmm. And he has strategically placed us in the world, in our professions, mm -hmm. to be a, an example, to be a guiding light. Mm -hmm. It's nowhere in the earth anyone can say God's presence don't abide. Mm -hmm. right. The opportunity of change or betterment doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Even in the prison system, mm -hmm. they're without ex excuse. Mm -hmm. In the hospitals, they're without excuse. It doesn't matter. In the schools, they're without excuse. Mm -hmm. Because God has somebody. It may not be anyone in your home, but it's somebody in your community. Mm -hmm. It's somebody that you know yeah. that can help change the course of your life mentally and behaviorally. Mm -hmm. Amen. So as I bring this to a close, continue to seek change. Mm -hmm. Continue to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. yes. Help is available. Mm -hmm. yes. God has already established it in the earth. Mm -hmm. He said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but they are mighty through God. To, to the, the pulling down, down of strongholds. Of strongholds. Yes, if your stronghold Cast is mental it. or behavioral yes, illness. Lord. Jesus. God is saying, pull it down. Pull it okay. down. I pull it down by getting help, mm -hmm. by seeking the resources, yes. the psychologists, yes. psychiatrists, mental health professionals, the pastors, the community, even in the schools, yes. the student, the school counselors, mm -hmm. reaching out to that aid that have been given to you. So God bless you. Amen. And thank you all for letting me share this with you.